Well, hello. Uh, that's me again. It's uh, May 17th, uh, 2022, and we have something to talk about. Uh, the picture you can see here is obviously a report by Reuters, you know, UK, British media, which pretty much, you know, trash in every single respect. Most of them are. And yeah, Ukraine repelled, they say. Ukraine says a lot of things. As you can see yourself, these guys are playing paintball there, and that should represent, in accordance to Reuters, and a bunch of ignoramuses who work there, including their military quote-unquote experts, it should represent uh, Ukrainian armed forces. Well, <clears throat> of course, it's a paintball match, and but, you know, that's the quality of information and the way uh, Western public is informed, in reality, misinformed and lied to by all mainstream media. <clears throat> they just lie. Their military experts lie, and uh, it worth noting that if they lie because they are uh, incompetent, well, it's bad enough, and I think so is the first one, but if they lie knowing the real score, then if uh, in the first case they were just simply military incompetence, then in the second case when they lie knowing the score, they're human trash, basically. So either way they don't win, either way it doesn't really reflect positively on them. And we're going to talk a little bit about this because their uh, utter incompetence of the Anglo-American military is stunning. It's actually beyond the description. I don't want to go into this uh, uh, Nazis surrendering at Azov style. It's just, be, besides me, there are many people who are already commenting it. The only thing which I can tell you that MGB, uh, Ministry of the um, uh, State uh, Security and FSB of Russia, um, MGB obviously being the part of security apparatus of the LDNR republics and uh, FSB and uh, investigative committee of Russia are having their hands full now processing all those uh, both uh, Ukrainian Nazis and of course uh, quite a few now we know it's um, uh, it's been confirmed and co corroborated many many foreign not just mercenaries many of them are most likely cadre officers with the made-up legend cover story so and yeah there will be very interesting uh, situation so yeah we have this azov steel thing uh which pretty much everybody expected it i mean i don't know it's only morons really thought that anything else can happen there well those who will not surrender they will be annihilated to starve to death or who russians don't care you know so that it's already sealed off and that's uh, uh, also the events today, is, uh, not today actually, on the May 14th, the Russian Minister of Defense really went a little bit, you know, um, into waiting mode, as usually they do. And uh, only today they uh, showed the uh, videos um, and well documented, really, annihilation of the uh, Vesuvius 24 tanks, 12 BMPs, and about 100 uh, KIAs. And that brings me to... Uh, the point which I made today in my blog, and I repeat it all non-stop. And you, if you listen to me, I'm basically I never change my story. And the story is very simple because it's true: is that uh, Vesu cannot really fight uh, maneuverable warfare, and the only way they uh, survive, for the most part is when they hide in the, uh, in the civilian uh, infrastructure and uh, obviously they use, widely use, which of, of course ignored by the uh, Western media and Pentagon, I believe Pentagon was the vehicle, and UK obviously, I wouldn't put anything past those British guys. <laughs> so, uh, you know, using human shields. They, you know, they get children, women, and they use them as a human shield. That's a great tactics evidently, you know, by, but what can I say? So yeah, whenever they get into the open or in any kind of maneuver, they get uh, annihilated and it, it just, you know, what can I say? The, the reason many people, obviously those dopamine dependent, you know, fanboys and, you know, those mama strategists and all those Pentagon, you know, uh, generals who speak bullshit basically on all those mainstream media, they don't understand that Russians are trying to save as many civilians as they can. And that is why it was, well, not relatively slow, it just, it just goes on as planned. And uh, I've been on record about this uh, BS about that. Oh, Russians didn't expect this or that. Well, they didn't expect one thing. 
that the Saloon and Nazis will annihilate their own population and use them like this. That nobody expected, absolutely, because this is just the lowest of the human and uh, in any respect. So, well, they're, they're Nazis, what do you expect from them? So, uh, that is an uh, interesting thing, of course, and do not forget, if you look um, up, first, in terms of the misinformation and what Ukraine says, uh, look up Senator Inhofe, 2015, he had this delegation from uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, headed by this imbecile Semchenko, and guess what? They presented to Mr. Senator and his staff the photographs, which they said, you see this column? These are Russian columns, you know, of tanks entering Ukraine in 2014 or 15, I don't remember. You can look it up, it's easy, easily found. And uh, they bought it. Now, you know, hook, line, and sinker just, you know, swallowed it. Uh, uh, and then, of course, when the Ukrainians left and Inhofe and his staff just, you know, supported them fully. Well, as it turned out, of course, they were showing fake photos because those were photos from 2008 of a Russian war with Georgia. But hey, you know, uh, as long as it serves good purpose, why not lie? And these uh, uh, morons, you know, in uh, Senate, they said, you know what, yeah, it doesn't matter, you know, if they lie to us, you know, so, because it's still true. Oh, well, what can I say? I mean, then don't be surprised with everything, what happens to the United States and combined West. So, but that also brings us to the uh, other point, especially on the background, you know, against the background of all these uh, happenings, so to speak, in Donbass today. And basically 16,000 has been confirmed, 16,000 grouping uh, in uh, Severodonetsk and Zichansk being in the cauldron already. And so that will be the, another big one. And uh, the fact that for eight years uh, all this American, British, French, German lying medias, those sacks of shit, they were saying that, well, yeah, Yuki is fight fighting Russian army. Boy, uh, they obviously didn't recognize the difference between Russian volunteers, which were plenty of them, and Russian army. Now they do. They suddenly recognize that, oh my God, this is the even small part of Russians appeared there, and you see the results. And people ask me constantly to comment on uh, Scott Ritter's uh, claim that, you know, uh, now Russia will will not win because, you know, there are huge numbers of weaponry uh, being shipped to Ukraine by West, by NATO. Uh, I already am on record and I just simply gonna repeat it. I disagree com completely on this issue. First, because already the collapse of the uh, VSU, uh, you know, basically uh, um, armed forces of Ukraine, is already in progress. You can look uh, look it up. You can see yourself that the losses are horrendous. The big hunch of the territorial defense have been already removed from his position because those terbats, so to speak, territorial battalions, they have been thrown into this grinder as the cannon for it, and they sustain horrendous. I mean, horrendous uh, losses. So, and as for uh, the shipment of the uh, weaponry and everything, uh, please people, can we, be, uh, can we get serious? I mean, most of what is being shipped is the what is called immediate battlefield uh, tactical weapons, like all those uh, stingers which do not really work, uh, those in-laws, uh, those uh, uh, javelins, and what have you. And even with the command and control of the... Um, uh, uh, United States, primarily Pent Pentagon runs this operation with the help of those, you know, tabakis, you know, United Kingdom. So it's, uh, doesn't matter what you do. I mean, it's still being obliterated. And fact is, no matter how you try to deliver anything in the end, Russians have truckload, I mean, truckload of the standoff, long range, mid range, what have you, weapons, and they will use it, and they, that's what they do. They blow, you know, storage after the storage ammunition depot after ammunition depot, and basically the state of the front, it completely confirms this, that yeah, the, you know, Vesu is basically, you know, as the organized force really doesn't exist anymore, even with all this, you know, support from NATO, and no matter how much, how many weapons you, uh, uh, you know, ship there, Russian economy is simply just gigantically more, you know, capable. 
you know, they, Russia produces whatever it needs, and you know, so it's gonna be obliterated one way or another. And most of those weapons don't make it to the uh, front line anyway. So yeah, let them ship it, you know. So, and because already uh, uh, Russia already uh, announced a couple or three weeks ago that any uh, NATO plane which lands in uh, Ukraine will be a legitimate military target. So, good luck transporting this through primarily, uh, you know, uh, those trucks, you know, m masqueraded as the food delivery, or those even, you know, sedans and station wagons which deliver those minuscule amounts of what have you, you know, that. And the issue of the oil, the issue of the fuel uh, for the everything else, yeah, that's another whole other story. So, yeah, I categorically do not agree with Scott Reader on this matter, for all my respect for him, but the point is, and that's what I wanted to talk about today, uh, I'm kind of sick and tired discussing this minutia, you know, of this, oh yeah, this battalion went there, they got something on the outskirts of some hamlet, da 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 da, guys, uh, all indicators are there for those who are not full of shit like most of those, you know, uh, Institute of Study of War, General Keen, or what have you, all those morons who run around, all those Fox and, uh, you know, CNN and uh, telling all those fairy tales about it. So, you know, and again, as I said, most of what they can do is mostly PR. They never want shit in their life. They never want any campaign of war. They always get their asses handed to them by people in sandals. Now they want to try to fight the power which has actually strategic weapons and which has uh, I mean, actually, it's much more impressive arsenal of the high precision and standoff weapons than the United States ever had. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, uh, there's no sense even discussing this. But I wanted to, uh, kind of within the framework of what I was doing for the last few videos, to start, uh, introduce you to, um, basically, uh, operational art. I really am, uh, um, and of course, uh, part of it, and not just operational art, actually on the tactical level, it's also done, the theory of operational research, or theory of operations, make no mistake, it relates to everything, strategic, you know, operational and tactical levels, but, I mean, obviously it's the part of the, and parcel of the, uh, uh, military science, but in order for me to really, uh, basically inform and if you wish those who do not have problems with me saying this, educate you better. I will be using some excellent, actually, English language sources, so something like, for example, uh, the uh, PowerPoint presentation by Dr. Milan Vega, who also uh, read lectures at some point of time in the U.S. Naval War College, you know, in Upper Rhode Island, and this is obviously a respectable uh, organization, especially considering the fact of, you know, uh, history of the U.S. Navy and wonderful history and magnificent one. So, and th these people are definitely not dummies. They definitely study war. They definitely uh, try to comprehend it and really uh, kind of grasp, so to speak, and uh, they do some sometimes very good job doing this. So there is no reason for us to deny, despite the fact that uh, I mean, American military history of the last uh, 50 years is just one huge disaster, basically. But it doesn't mean that there are no smart people. There are many middle level, actually. There are many pe people in even U.S. Uh, commands, you know, who understand what is going on. They understand the score. It's the top political and military level who do not grasp it. And again, um, so let's start with the, again, uh, explanation of really what war, war is and for people to understand better because uh, uh, what is happening now in Ukraine will serve as outstanding uh, modern example of the combined arms operation under unique restrictions and it will be studied for decades and decades to come because it's absolutely unique in very many respects and we can see the failure of US military thought on this uh, uh, matter. But, for example, let me show you the, uh, uh, how Milan Vega, from uh, uh, his lecture on the introduction of the, to the operations and operational art, uh, defines this, and uh, he gives the characteristics as the movement of large multi-service or multinational forces over a large part of the theater. Large part, it doesn't mean the whole theater. The whole theater is strategic level, basically, you know, and multi-theater it is strategic level. And that's what many people, I want to comment on that, they do not understand that basically, 
basically the victory in any war is defined by the achieving of the political objectives of the war itself and we'll be talking about this more but yeah this movement of large multi-service and multinational forces over large part of the theater and obviously as any theater a large theater of operations it has several sometimes you know operational directions so to speak on which different large forces operate uh, he also talks about the deployment forms, uh, the very basis of a plan for campaign or major operation. Yeah, that's the whole thing. A plan, plan. Yeah, that's bullshit which all those Pentagon, you know, talking heads and Kirby's, all those Kings and Petraeus tell you that they know the Russian plan. They don't. They have no freaking clue about it because only people with a very high military political level know this plan and the timetable. So, and when they tell you that, oh yeah, we no Russian plan. No, they don't. So they lie to you as usually what they do. They lie in Afghanistan, they lie in Iraq, and so they lie all the time. That's the only thing they can do. They uh, operate in the public uh, relations uh, um, space. They can uh, wear uniform, but they don't know what, what, how to fight a modern war with the peer, so to speak. With the person who shoots back with the big guns at you. They never experienced anything like that. So, and sequence and synchronized employment of military and non-military sources of power. Yeah, this is what uh, the new bullshit also uh, came about, like military and non-military war, you know, and they called it the hybrid war. Uh, I have news for them. Since ancient time, any war is hybrid. It's political, it's financial. Again, as I said, Napoleon was basically distributing a lot of fake, you know, counterfeit Russian money before, before his invasion to uh, Russia in 1812. So, yeah, that's hybrid war. But some moron probably got PhD thesis on that shit, you know, in inventing some new name for the good old warfare, which obviously goes across the whole spectrum of human activity and goes into the propaganda, psyops, and everything. And it has been going on for the millennia, not just hundreds of years, millennia. This is how the wars are fought. And, well, but at least here, yeah, you see, we use the professional terms and uh, all this bullshit of the uh, uh, hybrid warfare shouldn't be even used, I mean, because any war is hybrid. And we have this total war right now, basically, uh, semi-warm or semi-hot World War Three, which is already ongoing. It's economic, it's ideological, it's what have you. So we'll talk about this later, but I am just uh, want to introduce you to this. So then, of course, uh, Milan Vega gets into the other uh, slide of his PowerPoint presentation, and he explains us the terms used. And look how they are, uh, the operations, operational arc is uh, described as grand tactics. Sometimes it was also called the uh, small strategy, as a matter of fact. Operations, operational art, and look at this, it's German, Operations Kunst, you know. Then, of course, bang, next thing, operational art, operative искусство, in Russian. And then you have operational leadership, again, in uh, German. And the fact that uh, Milan Vega uses this, uh, operational art, both in German and Russian, uh, we have to understand that it's not accidental. These were Germans and Russians who developed this whole area when they understood that, well, you know what, tactics and strategy, you need to kind of tie them together. There is a huge gap between tactics and strategy. And that's what um, I wanted to show you the next slide by Mr. Vega. And this is one, uh, this one, uh, let me, uh, uh, is extremely important. Here is the scheme on the levels of war and combat forces employment. As you can see yourself, we have this Venn diagram sort of, you know, because obviously, and at, it, it's already stated, anybody who graduated any kind of military academy knows that tactics, operational art, and strategy, this is a vertical system. They are integrated vertically and they act simultaneously. They go back and forth, up and down, up and down, constantly creating this uh, feedback type of thing, loop. And as you can see yourself, tactical level of the um, warfare 
is the thing which all those mama's boys, fanboys, people who read too much, uh, um, Tom Clancy, and uh, those gamers, those uh, mercenaries who went through uh, uh, Afghanistan shooting, you know, safari, or went in... Uh, um, uh, into uh, Elden Air, Donbass, between 2014 and 2022, and, uh, you know, hunting those Ruskies, you know, they thought they know the real war. They were really great. They love this tactical gear, tactical this and that. They know how to use number of weapons, probably, and probably good shots. You know what? You look at me. I probably will be missing under present condition like the, you know, just the kindergarten girl, because I don't see that well anyhow you know and yeah i'm i'm sorry guys i'm 60 i'm not exactly spring chicken for this crap but this is what all those people love because everything above it and even real tactics not this bullshit about yeah you know uh, how to deal with some ambush somewhere or you know how to deploy their uh, anti-tank weapon the real tactics the way what is behind it and what is taught in military academies is a completely different story it requires a lot of math believe me a lot of math a lot of physics truckload of chemistry and some other things but look at this here's what he describes as what are the tactical actions battle remember i told you uh in the, my previous video when i was discussing the theory of operations and operations that but russians have their uh, term for this boy has nothing to do with boys really a boy which literally meaning the beating down it's the what kind of smaller subset of the much larger battle called srajenia Oh, actually, Srajeni or battle, re real big battle, consists of the combination of the, you know, those smaller battles, firefights, what have you. And that's what everybody loves to discuss, you know, oh my god, we have these two tanks, you know, on the left flank, you know, and we have this guy, sniper, doing this and that, and we have the platoon or squad of the grenade launch, and yeah, this is what everybody loves, it's all about, they think that's, oh yeah, that's war, well, it's war, yes, truth. Obviously, war is being prosecuted, you know, simultaneously on all uh, uh, three levels, but that's battle. Then, of course, we have engagement, we have strike. Yeah, we know what strike is. You launch something, that's strike, you know, so you attack some target, that's strike. So you, it could be strike, could be the salvo of the missiles, it could be the salvo of the MLRS systems, it could be just, you know, squad of uh, grenade, uh, you know, RPGs, people, you know, getting out on the front line and shooting at, you know, some whatever concentration of forces uh, or enemy forces, that's strike. Of course, there is attack, there is encounter, there is duel, and, you know, yeah, skirmish, yeah, that's, you know, ambush, raid, harassment, infiltration, patrol, search, surveillance, da-da-da-da-da-da. So, basically, that type of the tactical actions, which everybody loves to discuss. But, of course, very often not understanding what is behind all that, and how tactical manuals, real tactical manuals, and combat manuals, many of whom are actually classified, are written. They are written in blood of the experiences of the former wars, and they are written with the consideration of the new weapons and how they are employed. And the higher within the tactical level you go, the more and more it becomes complicated. And then suddenly, because even the operational tactical units like division, they have their own tactics, they operate on the operational level, so to speak, but they have to act, they have to act. And of course, when you have division and how it is done, you have the whole damn staff of the division. Many people who count, you have all those computers, you have all those networks there who do calculate how to use this division tactically. So, but as you can see yourself, we go to the uh, other part, which is operational level, and the operational level is a campaign and major operations. And they still interact, they still intersect with the theater strategic level when you have the campaigns, major operations, you know, uh, operations which are happening on the whole theater of operations. And actually, yeah, they are directly connected to the political aims of the war. And as you can see yourself, on the strategic level, you have means other than war, uh, Mu TW. So, yeah, that's what it is. That's hybrid warfare, guys. And hybrid warfare also happens actually on the tactical level and operational one. And guess what? Yeah, misinformation. 
you know, propaganda, you know, the, those leaflets sometimes, you know, those internet trolls, all of it is the hybrid warfare, and this is how levels of war and combat forces employment done. Here's your major scheme. Then, of course, we're going to the other thing, and uh, Mr. Vega shows us a very correct relationship between components of military art and the levels of war. You see? This is a great scheme which tells you and shows you how they are, uh, they are integrated. Tactical, tactics, operational art and strategy integrated vertically. And again, as I stated, lower tactical level and even lowest level of this lower level is what all those mamas, boys and military analysts love to talk about because it's easier. It is easy, you can show, oh, look at this gun, oh my god, it shoots, it hit the target, oh my god, you know, so we are winning. Uh, no, this is not how it's done, and actually this is not how the win even uh, uh, defined, and you saw yourself already on the example of the uh, Ukraine and operation which is happening there, and of course with this severe PR blow to uh, Western, you know, propaganda with this Azov thing, and it's just, you know, it happens all the time, you know, the, the, we don't even know now the number, it's many thousands, it's way above 5,000 right now, uh, uh, POWs of the WSU uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Russian um, uh, containment areas and colonies and all that, so um, expect bigger news after that so but that's how it goes and as you can see yourself uh, operational art is this thing which breaches the gap between those small things you know tactically you know the tank battalion in the attack or again how to use the minefields or for that matter how you deploy to the launch uh, area of the cruise missiles that's all tactics but operational art breaches this gap and it ties it together and that's what we have so, and um, in this case, um, I want to show you something about from the Defense Science and Technology Board of the Australian uh, Ministry of Defense, which actually explains to you what is operational planning and uh, how you really conduct it. And um, I will kind of use it as demonstration uh, because obviously it's much larger than that. And again, we're doing just intro into this uh, type of the or segment of the military science and they explain what is operational planning and as you can see yourself and criteria actually are pretty well defined you have to admit that they did a good job here actually there's Chinese guy who did this job you know Chinese officer <laughs> so operation planning is the process of producing operational plans and again we're gonna be talking about operational plans I already showed you some of it you know so an operation plan is a description of military operations with a prescribed order that are intended to achieve a desired end state. Remember this, end state. What is this end state? How it is defined? And only when you understand what end states are and how they are presented and described in the orders, any kind of orders on the tactical operation or strategic level, that's when you will begin to understand, oh, if the war is going well or not. But that's uh, because most of people are ignorant on that. They never care about any kind of combat models or they don't care about anything. That is why they listen to those, you know, former generals who never won shit in their life, you know, and always were grown up and, uh, you know, basically developing as the professionals who had their asses kicked all the time. That's why they grabbed desperately, you know, to this uh, mythology of the uh, first Gulf War. But when you begin to understand what is behind everything, oh my gosh, the picture suddenly changes. And that's what I was acting upon all my life because that's what I was taught. Operation planning is one of the functions of military command and control. Absolutely, C2. Guess what? Guess who owns C2 right now in Ukraine? Absolutely, Pentagon and UK Defense Ministry. Are they good at it? Not really. But, and I will explain why not really. And, it's correct, C2 is sometimes be seen as the military equivalent of business management. Well, yeah, that's the problem, you know, they think that it's just business management. It is not, but of course there are some, you know, parallels which can be drawn. And in order for you to, uh, also, for me to also 
uh, to show you, for example, and this is uh, 15 years old, for example. This was even done at, I believe, uh, Windows 2008 platform, but they could be Linux, what have you. You know, military uh, 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 networks and military computers, they work on uh, all kinds of, you know, different, uh, um, how to say it, operational systems, which are, you know, um, let's put it this way. They are specifically honed for their... Um, military applications and just to show you this is one of the screens and the, uh, in order for you to do it uh, uh, you know properly you'll have like many screens like that dozens upon dozens is there just demonstration of how the let's say a uh, basic you know amphibious operation is planned you know this is introduction level this is where you check your boxes and this is where the model based planning begins Guess what? What you see here is model-based planning. What are models? A lot of math. A lot of math and empirical uh, data and experiences which are wrapped up in this modeling, of which I already spoke a little bit and will be talking about more. And this is one of the screens just out of very many which you need to go in and create this al so to not algorithm, algorithm is already embedded there, to just fill the forms to see for yourself what you have and how you will develop this, you know, model-based amphibious landing. That's what it is. Look at this. Look at the conditions. Check the conditions uh, types, you know, water condition. How about underwater threat neutralized? Good luck checking those uh, boxes. Then you have in uh, um, threat level surface asset enclosed neutralized good luck checking those bo boxes guess what suddenly it all becomes basically stochastic actually not deterministic it's not like you yeah good luck trying to uh, uh, uh basically neutralize uh, in serious war god forbids you know uh russian you know uh, caliber carrying uh, missile submarines so yeah this is just the demonstration so and that was the introduction today to give you a little bit of the, you know, feel of the operational art and what is this all about. It's just very basic introductionary things and believe me, I'm trying to simplify them as much as I can. So that was my kind of intro uh, to the operational art for you today, guys. For you to kind of learn, you can always, you know, pick up, you know, and freeze the screen and look at those things, read them, and try to kind of, you know, rotate in those in your mind. So, in conclusion, however, um, uh, and about Russia losing it all the time, uh, militarily, economically, and all that, you, you know, Russians are just about to implode, <laughs> and Russia is too about to disintegrate, and the VSU is soon going to be approaching Moscow, so we know that, but here's the other thing. Yeah, they want their... Um, introduce now the uh, embargo on Russian oil, then they don't want to introduce embargo on Russian oil, so, and they want to just to do new taxes on it, so of course, yeah, let them, EU wants to do that bunch of idiots, basically, they're killing themselves and they kill their uh, European population, but now look at this, while those big shots like, you know, Shell, Total, what have you, exited Russian oil, uh, Russians have this wonderful proverb, Святое место пусто не бывает. The holy place is never vacant. So, yeah, you, you go away, guess what? New people come in and they play. So, and, but then again, uh, the su economic suicide of the West is something to behold. I'm, I, I never saw anything like this in my life. I, there, there's nothing really, I mean, and, uh, but there you go. Russian oil will, be, will continue to be delivered, it will continue to be sold, and if, if need be, Russians will just simply, you know, uh, reduce their production, which will create the, uh, such crisis that the 70s uh, uh, oil crisis will be nothing compared to this. So, yeah, that's this, you know, small, um, you know, uh, Russia, you know, whose economy is smaller than that of Netherlands, barely 2% of the world GDP. So, you understand, I'm screwing with you. It's, it's, it's pathetic to look at those people. They are totally incompetent. They do not understand how the world works, really. And as a result, you see that the modern state of the 
current state of the combined West, which is nothing short of the economic and military catastrophe. And we just at warming up, the things will accelerate even more. Well, what can I say? Uh, I am on record. Uh, if it would be up to me, I would shut down most of the humanities programs in, across the board in the United States. I don't care about United Kingdom. And I would fire most of those professors. Those people, they have zero practical experience in anything, and they just know theories. Well, there you go. So that's the, the uh, theoretician who ran the country into the ground, apart from the obviously corrupt interests of the politicians and uh, corporations. So, but that's my word for you today, uh, 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 guys. And uh, as always, uh, please subscribe to my channel and those who can afford support me on the Patreon. And as you can see yourself, I already started to uh, doing some minor introductions into the operations and I will continue to do so with your support. So thank you very much. Talk to you later. Bye bye.